Welcome back to the Meeple Marathon. Today we're going to learn how to play Dyson Crusoe. So this is a not really a lightweight version of Robinson Crusoe and it's by a completely different designer. Um, it's not by Portal Games. This is part of um, Gabe Barrett's solo series. Uh, this was designed by uh, Jin Hee Han and Hee Won Kang. So but it it follows the the kind of Robinson Crusoe Adventures on the Cursed Island mentality of you're basically just trying to survive along with completing a few objectives uh, as you go along. And <clears throat> so it's definitely more travel friendly, smaller footprint, but the strategy is, is still there. It's still very deep. So setup is pretty straightforward. You're always going to lay out these two um, little felt or not felt... Um, uh, microfiber mats here which are very nice they lay nice and flat um, especially on top of another mat you're always going to start with a meeple here on the mat and the map has got a lot of stuff going on it but you don't always need to traverse the entire map every time in fact for your first quest you really only need to make it two spaces across the map you're also always going to start on day one of the day tracker again you're not going to need 16 days every quest that's just the maximum that you might need for some you're always going to start here at the beginning of this event track, which is this orange track. And then your meeple is going to start on space one of the action track, which has the map symbol underneath it. You're going to take three yellow dice, place them as ones, and put them each in each one of these light purple spots. You're going to give yourself five health or whatever health of the person you have chosen to be. In this case, I've chosen the hunter. That's what's recommended for the first game. But there are lots of different um people that give you different bonuses on the bottom and on the back side there is a harder version so if you want to play on a more difficult level uh, you could simply only give yourself four hearts at the beginning but lots of options there but we chose the hunter for this time since hunting is one of our main objectives you're also going to pick a friend so uh instead of friday or all those other people wilson's um you have various friends that are going to give you bonuses. So my friend Jack here is going to give me a wood bonus uh, if I uh, circle up there. If I circle up to this spot and then choose to use him, I gain one wood. Or if I wait, I can gain two wood. But again, there are different friend options. So you can, uh, you know, my friend Tom can give you a two or a four. My friend Bilson gives you food. My friend Wednesday gives you stars. Stitch gives you rocks. And Patches gives you a reduction on either the weather or the raid die. So again, lots of options to choose from there. You're always going to start with two food, and we're pretty much ready to go. Um, you will choose a quest. So these, you know, I'll say quest on the back, and you get to choose. They recommend playing through them in order. So this is quest number one. You can see here our objective is to hunt a deer and make a rope before the end of day six. But again, there are uh, seven total quests, so six additional more for you to give you some variety in the game. So for such a, a small package here, um, there's really quite a lot of replayability. Last but not least, a few things up top here. Um, the fact that we're playing quest one, they say that you really should only need these items here, but you are free to put out whatever items you want. Um, these some of them are much more uh, quest specific um, but you could have them out uh, there's no reason not to but for the first game you're probably only going to need these four really you only need the rope because that's the only requirement and then you're going to have your raid cards here these are always going to be essentially put in this order with the bunny on top then the deer then the boar the bear the bar you know or barbarian or cannibal whoever that is and the wolf these will change depending on where you are on the map here. So as you see, there's little signs here. We're in the bunny area right now. After we traverse over this dotted white line, we'll be in the deer area. If we move down this way, we'll be in the bear area. Or if we go north, we'll be up here in the boar area. If we pass through the bear area, this area here will be the cannibals. And then down this little island is where we find the wolves. So as you traverse across the uh, map, you will just change whatever card is on top. There's only one type of animal that you can hunt and that will attack you back during the raids. 
and that's set up. All right, now that we are ready to play, you always, there's three phases to every round or every day, the morning, afternoon, and evening. The morning phase simply consists of rolling the three dice that you have. In this case, you start the game with two yellows and a gray. Now that's important and we'll discuss why in a second, but let's go ahead and roll these out. So I got a two, a five, and a four. These then have to be placed in descending order and really it only matters what the first one says because the first one justifies how far you move along the event track. So in this case, we would go one, two, and we cover up this spot here that says we get a stone or a wood. Well, looking ahead, I don't need a stone to craft the rope, so I'm gonna claim a wood. Now, if I had stone, stone would enable me to, I can either use stone to craft things, or stone can be used to re-roll these three dice during the morning phase. You can't re-roll them at other times, but during the morning phase, you can choose one, two, or all of them to re-roll by spending a single stone. I don't have any stones, so I had, I'm had i stuck with my two. Now, that's it for the morning phase. Now we move on to the, this is morning. Now we move on to the afternoon phase. We're focused right in this center area. At this point, we can choose our dice in any order we want, and we then move our meeple around the track going clockwise, the number of spaces equal to the number of pips. The order in which we choose to use the dice though means that the first dice we choose is gonna come down here, the second dice is gonna come down here, and the third dice is come down, gonna come down here. This is important because this die, everything that you see here in the dark purple at the end of the night phase is gonna shift over and gonna become the point values for the weather and the raids the next day. So if I put a five here, I'm okay because my quest doesn't have any uh, of these, these time symbols. Let's look at some of the other quests here. Um, well, maybe it's some of the other activities. Yeah, for example here, if I have a trap, and I put a three or a five um, into that spot, I'm going to gain a food and a pelt. I don't plan on building any items that are going to need to use this. So this die for this scenario, it doesn't really matter. But here the weather die, if I'm a one or two, I'm fine. It's gonna be nice and sunny. I don't have to worry about building up my shelter or my, my roof line. But as I get into three and four, I might experience rain or even five or six, I'm gonna experience snow. And that's gonna take away my roof. If I can't pay with my roof, I pay with my health. Also, this die here, fives or sixes, means that the animal in my area is going to raid. Right now, it's just a bunny, but he's gonna come eat my food. As the animals get tougher, you'll see that the deer could knock down your fence or steal two food. The boar could knock down two fences or hit you for health and hurt you and steal food. So they get worse and worse the more difficult the animal area you are in. So the order in which I choose the dice is important because they end up down here. But also, if I'm going to move five, one, two, three, four, five, in this case, I would end up hunting. What would I hunt? I would hunt a rabbit. Or if I moved four, one, two, three, four, I'm collecting wood. Or if I move two, one, two, I'm collecting stone. Your meeple stays where they are for the rest of the game. So if I choose to go one, two, take stone, and then do one, two, three, four, I'm able to build roof, but only a roof line, but only if I have pelt and wood. Or if I choose to go five, I would heal. Well, neither of those are helpful to me, so I don't want to start with a two. So let's think about this and what we want to do first. We are needing a pelt, we have a wood, and we have a food. So we're actually pretty close to uh, building a rope. So let's actually go ahead and hunt. I'm gonna use this five first. The five, because if I put high dice numbers here, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't affect me in this quest or with any of these materials. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and now I'm gonna hunt. Well. Let's determine how successful I need to be to hunt. So here's my rabbit that I'm hunting because I'm in the rabbit area. 
I need two fists in order to defeat the rabbit, two strength. And this tells me that fists is equal to the number of stars. Well, I put a five here. Fives, when rolled, give me two stars. Perfect. Also, however, my hunter has one fist in general, always with him. And when taking the hunting action, he gets me an extra star. So I actually have three stars plus his generated always there fist for a total of four fists. So I have way overkilled the bunny. I don't get to kill him twice. I just kill him once. That means I get a food and a pelt. Perfect. The bunny goes back. The bunny is going to stay in the area until I change locations. Now, I need to decide what I'm going to do with my two and the four. The gray die is important because the gray die is the only die that you could use to move backwards. So one, two, three, four, I could move backwards and come here and claim either a food, wood, or rock. But if I take the four next, that means in day two, I'm going to be dealing with rain and would have had to have built a roof or take a hit on my health. So let's deal with the two first. All right, so we're just going to go one, two forward. This is putting a nice, clean, sunny day in day two for us. But we've landed on a space that says, oh, you're healing. Well, I'm at max health. I can't gain any more health. With a two, I'm at one star. Okay, well, there's two things you can do if you don't want to take the action that you've landed on. You can either spend that action to instead move this disc on your friend one spot, or you can choose to craft an item. In this case, one of our goals is to craft the rope. We have what's required to build the rope. We have a food, we have a wood, and we have a pelt. We need, however, two stars to do this. Right now, we placed a two down, and we only have one star. So, we have two options. One is that we could wait we could simply push our friend disc over and that's going to be our action. Or we can spend food in order to increase the pip value of said die from a two to a four, giving us the two stars we need. All right, so food can always increase the pip value temporarily to either change your movement or to, or no, I'm sorry, food only changes the pip value for stars. So rocks allow you to reroll dice in the morning. Food, spending food or health allows you to change the pip value for star purposes. Spending wood or health allows you to move your meeple one spot right or left. You don't get that action again. It just allows you to set yourself up for better landing on what action you want based on your die roll. And then pelt, spending a pelt at any point in time can move your friend up uh, one spot. So I think we're going to do it. We're going to spend two food. It's pretty expensive. That's going to turn this into a four. It doesn't stay a four because we don't want it a four. We want our weather to be nice and sunny. But at this point, I will spend the remainder of my resources. So everything's gone, but I now have claimed the rope. The rope is going to give me the ability that if I take the build fence action... I'm going to get an additional fence, or if I take the build rope or roof action, I get an additional roof. So I don't, not too worried about that, but this is one of our requirements. So check, we have made a rope. All right. Last but not least, we have our four to spend. Our four is going to be safe for raiding in the future. So one, two, three, four, we can either gather rocks or one, two, three, four, we can build a fence, but I need wood and fencing um, to do so. So neither one of these is going to help us. What I really need is some rock. I guess we're going to, we could use some fencing in the future. So let's go one, two, three, four. Our four is giving us two stars. You see here that stars, rocks that we claim is equal to the number of stars. So we're claiming two rocks. All right. So we now have performed our three actions in the order that we chose. Now we move into the evening phase. So now we're down here into this kind of 
uh, lower third portion of the map. First thing we need to do is either consume a food we need to eat or we lose a heart. Well, we have no food, so we're losing a heart. Boom, that's gone. Next, we're gonna go through each of these individually. This one doesn't do anything. We have no time effects. This one also doesn't do anything. It's nice and sunny. And this one, no raid. But you can see as we move these over, this is setting us up for the next day. Luckily, we paid attention to how we brought our dice down in the order in which we did so, because we're still good. All right, the last thing we're gonna do at the in the evening is advance this, and we're set. We're ready to begin day two. So at this point, we would simply roll out our dice again, and you can see we have a two, another two, and a five. So this is boom, boom. It's going to take away two of our food, but in this case, if you don't have the food up here, you don't lose the health. So we'd lose two food. I actually don't have two food, so I'm okay with that. I could spend a rock to re-roll these, um, but I'm not gonna worry about it because let's see, one, two, three, four, five, one, two. That's gonna allow me to end up here to move. We need to move twice in order to uh, get to where we can hunt a deer. Um, so I'm, I'm okay with where we are. <clears throat> All right, so let's start with the obvious choice here, and that's spending the five to go one, two, three, four, five, and we'll heal up, that's fine. Um, let me think here. Do I want to heal or do I want to move my friend Jack who could give me wood? Or do I want to spend a health and get risky moving my meeple one forward before I do that to gain food? I think that would be a better use. So I'm actually going to spend a health, which will have put me, um, where was I here? I would have spent a health before I did that action to move here and then gone one, two, three, four, five. Now I'm at a five. That's going to give me two food. Okay. Although now I have positioned myself away from the map. <laughs> so I think what we're going to do is, this is, this is getting risky, but I'm going to spend one more health to move backwards one, and then spend my two to go one, two. Now at this point, I need to spend hearts equal to the path I am traversing. So my first two paths I need to cross here are only one star each. As you get like higher up the mountain, you're looking at three stars here uh, on these harder areas. But I only need one star, so my two is giving me that one star. So I can move my person. As I move on to this spot on the map, I gain a food. So I'm, I think I'm pretty good for a while. As long as I can keep myself from bad weather and raiding, I'm not going to starve. And then last but not least, I could go one, two again, um, which is, again, not super helpful. I don't need more rocks. But what we're going to do is go one, two. We'll have spent this, and we're just going to use that to go up here. All right. Last but not least uh, is the evening phase again. So we are nothing here, nothing here, and nothing here. These all push over. Oh, I forgot to eat. I do need to eat a food. So we're still good. We didn't take any hits that time. Um, we've got nice low numbers for the next time. This advances. Now this is critical because as we advance into day three, it says we need to move up the raid die one spot. But luckily, we're still okay. A three is still low enough not to get raided. All right. Day three, we're halfway through. We just need to get over to the deer and uh, do some hunting. And this is not going to help. So um, a one, a two, and a two. So a one I'm fine with. This moves uh, my friend Jack up right there. I could spend a rock to re-roll these two, which I think I might do because I need at least one high number here in order to feel like I can be successful in hunting the deer. So I'm going to spend this one here and I'm going to re-roll these two. I, I want to keep my one and I know that's going to be the lowest number. It didn't get much better, but 
that's a little better there of my reroll. I don't really need the rocks for anything. I could try and build the stone knife if I'm worried about hunting the deer. But let's see, let's focus on moving uh, this turn. So I probably want to spend, I can either spend the four first or last and not have to worry about weather. So let's see, one, two, three, four. This would build me roofing, which would be helpful, but I don't have any wood or pelt. Or if I went one, two, I'd end up here. Or one, I'd end up here. Again, still no wood. I have the wood here. But we want to get to the map. So one, two, and then one, two, three, four. Or one, then one, two, then one, two, three, four. Okay, so we want to spend the four last. It's whether or not we want to... And then we're going to hunt as well. So I'm actually okay with, with this. I'm going to put a one here. And we're going to build a fence. So I'm going to use my friend Jack. I'm going to reset him to gain a wood, which I'm immediately going to use. Along with my one stone I have, which is going to give me two fences that I can put right here. But since I have the rope, I actually get three fences. So now I am okay with um, once we get to the deer, if the deer ends up raiding us because the fences will block the deer. All right, then we're going to use our two. That one's going to come down to go one, two. We can hunt now. Two is giving me one star. I have one star here. That's the two I need. I have the third one there. I'm plenty good. So that's giving me a pelt and a food. Good. And then last but not least, we're going to bring the four down. One, two, three, four. The four is giving us two stars, plenty enough to move into here, and that will gain me a wood. So that was a pretty good turn. I'm pretty happy with that. At this point now, the bunny is going to go away, and we expose the deer, who just, he gets more difficult. The rating gets more intense, but we're good. I'm feeling pretty good about where we are. This die does not matter. A two is a sunny day, and a three does not raid we need to consume a food, and this pushes down. Nothing happens at the beginning of day four. All right, I think we can do it now. We are in the area of the deer. We've already created the, the rope, um, and I'm good with that. So sixes are gonna give us what we need. We just have to figure out how to land on this action space, and we're set. So three is gonna be one, two, three, food. I am perfectly fine with that. So morning phase is done. Afternoon phase. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I think we can just make this very simple on ourselves because if we go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, we'd end up back here. And I want to use that six. I want to land here with a six. So if we go one, two, three, then one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. We're back at it again. There's nine spaces here. So what we need to do is we're going to spend our one wood, not our health, let's not do that, to move backwards one spot. Then we'll use a six, putting a six here. That's not going to hurt us. That's perfect. And we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Boom, right where we need to be. All right, the six is giving us three stars. That's going to give us three fists. The hunter is going to give us an additional one, four fists plus a guaranteed fist, five fists. That's way more than we need to hunt this deer. So this deer is giving us two food and two pelts. And that satisfies our quest. Essentially, all we need to do is survive the day. I really don't wanna to have to deal with any snow. So let's just use the three next. One, two, three. That's giving us food. We have a ton of food, though. Um, now, there's not much. I, I can't build anything else. I've got lots of pelts here, um, but no wood. So we're just going to move Jack up. And then we're going to pull this six down. And he's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six again. He's going to be able to hunt. Again, I'm not uh, concerned with any of this. Uh, we're just going to move Jack again. So let's move. We will consume a food. This die does not hurt us. This die is a sunny day. And this die does not raid. So we are successful. 
even if we had to last another round, we would have moved up here. This would have, this can't get higher than a six. We would have suffered one health from raining unless we could have built a roof. But when we got here and the deer raided, we would have only lost one fence. And it, we're, we're sitting pretty with lots of fencing to protect us from the wildlife. But we were successful at the end of day four, so we don't even need to worry about that. And there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, that is how you play Dyson Crusoe. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. Um, obviously quest one is like the, the very easy, straightforward, almost tutorial quest. They definitely get harder as you go along. You have to traverse further across the island, create more things, um, survive more days, things like that. But all of what we covered here can help you through all of the various quests. This is the core rules and they don't change throughout the game. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Have a great day.